Liz Thompson from Genomi Canada. This is the Genomi quilt binder set and I have stitched uh, my binding all the way almost to the end of one of the corners of the quilt. So I'm just going to continue on until I reach the very edge of the quilt. Most times when we're doing quilt binding we stop a little bit before the edge of the quilt. In this particular method we do not. So uh, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to raise my needle and I'm going to raise my presser foot and then I'm going to use this handy dandy tool, a finger pressing tool, and I'm going to pull the fabric out to the back of the machine and I'm going to reach in and press that fabric with my finger pressing tool and I'm going to pull another section of the binding through the binder and out to the back and press it with my finger pressing tool. Why am I using, uh, why am I pressing the fabric? Well, that's quite simple because uh, it, go, it behaves better when I have to feed it back into the mouth of the binder a little bit later on. Okay, so the next thing is we've got our threads that are still attached to the needle. So what I do is I pull a little bit of those threads out and then I cut them off so that I now have two threads uh, attached to the first section of my quilt. Yes, this is a very mini little quilt, but I'm just showing how to turn a corner, so I'm not doing a whole big thing. And then what I do is I make sure that the bobbin thread is on the back of the binding and the top thread is on the front and I just move them over off to the side. The next thing is I make sure that I've got two pins and I now fold my binding on the corner and I just want to check that you can see in the camera. Yep, you can. And I fold that binding only on the top of the quilt and I put a little pin into just the top part. Oh, this pin is really not the sharpest pin. I think I'll have to get rid of it and uh, get some new sharp pins in my little box. All right, there's just a little thread here that's bothering me, so I'll pull that out. All right, so that is my little mitre folded on the top of my quilt. I'm now going to turn it over to the back, and I'm going to do exactly the same on the back. Now, if you look here, that is not exactly how I would like it. It needs to have this little bit pulled out so that it forms a much neater mitre. And once I have that in place, oh my, not sharp pins again. All right, there I have um, my mitre on the back folded as well. And now what I need to do is bring my binding back into the um, binder attachment. So I did lower the presser foot a little earlier after I finished pulling the binding out to the back. Now I need to raise it up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my binding backwards and forwards. Do you see how I'm doing that backwards and forwards motion? And I do that because when I do that, I can feel if, my, if there is an obstruction anywhere. And if there is an obstruction, if I feel something's not quite right, then I know that somewhere along the line, probably, as luck would have it, at the back of my quilt, there might be a little bit of fabric folded. If I don't feel anything, which I did not on this particular occasion, then I know that everything is as it should be. And I am now right back to the beginning of where I want to start again on the second side of my quilt. So once again, I'm going to drop my uh, presser foot. And I did put those pins in. And one of the big no-nos with pins is we shouldn't be sewing over pins. So we do know that the first little part of this stitching, I'm going to have to be very careful that I don't break my needle on those pins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the speed of the machine down to very slow. And I've also taken hold of my threads. That's why we kept those two threads on the first side of the uh, quilt. And I had kept long tails so that I could grab them now and have that assist me to gently pull and get the stitching going on the second side. 